with a, a little, uh, little bit of background about yourself. Maybe you could tell us a little about you, your background, and how you uh, came to lead marketing at, at Plan to Fitness. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's been an, a, an amazing career and an uncanny adventure for sure. First thing about me, I'm a, I'm a Southerner. I'm a deep South boy from Louisiana, a Cajun of, of, of all things. Um, went to school at Louisiana State University for my undergrad degrees. So I have purple and yellow in my veins. We'll start by saying that. Um, but I've um, had, had a great career through um, advertising agency side of the world with Omnicom to uh, PepsiCo um, to the Walt Disney Company crafting storytelling and, and multiple categories to the big world of automotive um, with Nissan and now um, to what is the most enjoyable and most fulfilling part of my career working in the world of health and fitness with Planet Fitness um, and really changing and impacting lives. So it's been quite a journey, um, a lot of fun, but the one thing that's been consistent um, is always growing and challenging myself, but also putting the member, the consumer first and getting as close to them as possible to really create unbelievable experiences. And I, and I know that that's a, that's a critical part and a really important part of the fulfillment that you have there at Planet Fitness from our conversation. Maybe you can tell us, most of us probably are familiar with Planet Fitness and have seen uh, the, the purple, uh, you mentioned again here, um, signs, but can you tell us a little about uh, about the business? And, and I'd love if you can talk about the, the brand's mission and, and purpose as well as part of that. I know it's, I know it's really important to you and, and to the brand. Absolutely. Well, Planet Fitness um, is one of the largest fitness providers in America, and we have um, locations um, across many countries as well, over 2,000 locations um, in the U.S. alone. And um, it's a brand that was founded in 1992 on a promise, on a purpose um, called the Judgment Free Zone. And that was that anyone, everyone is welcome. And no matter how big or small your goals are, we're going to break down the noise, all the intimidation, everything that you think you know about fitness to get to the truth and help you achieve those goals. Um, and the business has just been on fire. We have an incredible membership base of over 14 million members, um, even post COVID. And we are going after what we call the 80%. So this is 255 million people um, in America that are of age and have the ability to access fitness, but don't. Um, and it's not about the fit getting fitter for us. We're actually going after the first time gym user and the community that can support them uh, to start that fitness journey. Um, it's very, very important that we bring our purpose to life every day. It guides us. It has since the foundation. It's not something new that we've just brought to life in this moment. Um, it really has been the growth engine of the experience, a differentiator for us, because we have an incredible value. Um, we keep it at, at 10 bucks a month for our base membership and 2000 locations. And if you have a black card membership for 22 99, you get access to all those locations, plus you get the ability to bring a friend with you and many other benefits along the way. It's really about creating that community and the support and the experience that goes around it and helping people achieve their individual goals. So when you come into Planet Fitness, the most amazing thing for me starting off when I joined and, and, and now leading the marketing function, I've worked in mass market brands my entire career. I love um, the mass market, I love consumers. This is truly the most mass market brand I've ever touched in my life. And you think about some of my background and my resume, you're like, really? Yes. Our members represent from an income level, a third, a third, a third, high, medium, low. Every um, piece of the spectrum from um, geography is represented, from um, um, background, from a demographics perspective, male and female equally split, um, ethnicity, gender orientation, um, but what's amazing is when you come into a Planet Fitness, if you actually come in the doors, you're actually surprised and delighted by how big, spacious, and clean the clubs are and the community environment that we have. And we have what we used to call lunks, um, which are the traditional gym rats. Um, they'll use our facilities and they love it. And they're helping out the elderly and they're helping out those that have pounds to lose or just starting their fitness journey. And everyone's in and actually supporting and cheering on one another and we've had platforms called Planet of Triumphs. We celebrate our success on social media. And this community piece really comes to life um, to help people stick with it and change their lives. And from a purpose to a mission perspective, our mission is to democratize fitness for everyone and change as many lives as possible with the power of physical fitness. So it's a really fulfilling um, opportunity and, 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 and a business for me to lead. 
And as a marketer, our whole job is to change people's behaviors, influence behavior, um, drive results, right? For me now, it's the ultimate challenge because the goal for me and my team is to actually change people's behavior in their lives. And we do that. You're talking about changing their, phys their physical behavior, their physical fitness. I mean, that's the, the ultimate behavior drivers. How do you get someone to, to, to work out, exercise, to become more active? It sounds like the, the, there's that a great intersection there for you. Um, the behavior for the, uh, to influence results for the company, but also influence results for, for your members and, and consumers as well. That's right. I mean, it's one of those things you hear a lot of companies talk about, and I'm very pleased and blessed and, and thankful to say that we're actually putting into practice. It's doing good is good business, and we see it. Our business is growing, very, very strong brand, um, incredible franchisees that support our local communities and a community of men and women whose lives have changed and want to help other people change their lives. Um, and that's what it's all about. And we do it in our unique brand tone and spirit, which has also been part of the DNA of the brand. You know, yes, our bold, crazy colors, go Tigers for me for LSU, but more importantly, go Planet Fitness, um, but also the tone. Um, we, we, we say a lot of words that we probably can't say publicly, um, but we do brand them different ways. So um, we say uh, no bull fit, or stop the bull fit. You could put another word in there, um, but there's been a lot of, um, information over the years that's not true or intimidates our members or the population at large and we lean into it and we want to be the the brand that can take it on say what we need to say say it'll be a little bit funny um, because this is fitness and you should have um, a physical fitness experience and a mental fitness experience that, and feel good inside too so we want to take it on colloquially with our members and, and break down those barriers that keep people out of the gym I want to talk about that brand voice a little bit, and maybe um, maybe it's a good segue. Um, kind of no no discussion about where you're going to be going in the back half of 2021 and over the next couple of years would really be uh, would really be meaningful without the context of, of the la of the past year. I'm not sure if anything major happened in your life in the in the past year or the company's life in the past okay. year, but um, maybe just I'd love this to take a step back if we could, you know, 14 or 15 months ago. Um, where was the company pre pre pandemic and what was happening? Even just a personal story. What, what, uh, where were you when, when you started to get the news that, that everything was changing and, and what did you and your team do, uh, at that point? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really fascinating story. I mean, if you think about the fitness industry where we really take off, as you can imagine is January new year's resolutions, right? That is the moment when people reset themselves, the new year, the hope of the new year is ahead. And usually the, for the fitness industry, January, February, March are the strongest times of the year. It's, it's, it's the reverse of the Three resolutions, world, right? right? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, I came and joined planet fitness in November, 2019, and we had some incredible plans laid. Some of our competitors had a couple of missteps and I immediately switched the marketing strategy to, to, to take advantage of that, be a part of the social conversation because we're a socially driven brand. Um, life was good, got to New, New, New York, Times Square was a million plus people in the square were ringing out 2019, ringing in 2020, the fireworks go off as a sea of purple and yellow and we were on fire. Life was good. Like I was like, wow, this is amazing. What an incredible moment. Record January, record February, record March. And then we got this, um, this, this thing, this little thing that was starting in China that was bubbling up and people were getting sick and we were trying to think about what would we do with it. And I remember very well the day, um, Friday the 13th, March 13th, I had just met with my team um, in, uh, at our headquarters in the morning. Um, they said, hey, you know, we really, we were all talking about what can we do for our members and people who aren't our members to help them in their fitness journey. What happens if, if things start closing down? They said, well, let's actually bring a workout to America for free on Monday. Let's do something on Facebook Live. It was a platform we had, we had our channels. We're gonna get behind it. We're gonna have some fun, just get people moving, lighten the load, bring our brand purpose forward. Let's do this. Flying to Nashville, um, I was transitioning to meet my family landed got a call from our ceo and our executive leadership team we're all on the call we're going to close this is when the government um uh mandate came through so immediately picked up the phone and within 48 hours i told my my poor team who just jumped through hoops it's like we're going to do this we're going to bring this idea forward we're going to brand it through our purpose and we're going to do it every single day so we launched united we move which brought the planet fitness experience right into your home and literally every single day, we um, our goal was just to get America moving. 
Um, lots of conversations on how many reps should this be hit, uh, hit circuit, should it be this, that, or the other. And all of those things are very important and we take it very seriously, but it's like, I just want to inspire people to move and take a little bit of the stress and anxiety out. So we called all of our um, contact lists, all of our friends and family that we work with from Erica Lugo, the big, biggest loser, Doug the Pug, social media star, Jerry O'Connell, Julian Edelman, whoever worked with us in the past and said, hey, will you help us do this? And as we led into that moment, we um, shut down our clubs, first time in our history, and it's happened in many industries. Um, yeah. Zero, right? And we had to talk to our members and say, we're here for you, we've got your back. So we're gonna keep you moving. The other thing for our members, we've frozen your membership. We're not gonna bill you while we're closed. We wanna make sure that we're taking care of you. Um, and we started this journey, what we thought was gonna be a couple months, right? Like, I mean, none of us knew if you think back to that time, but this is where the brand and your purpose really leads your choices. If you're really strong in your brand and you really understand your members and your consumers, and you really understand what you stand for in the world, these conversations, while hard, are actually very easy because they're decisive and they're definitive um, and you can be dynamic with what you do. And I think the thing to understand also about what I was doing together with my leadership team and the board and my team was my marketing is based on what we call our marketing flywheel. It's the best marketing equation. I love it, I sign up for it, meaning the more joins I get, the more marketing dollars I get, period. There's no cap. So for a guy like me and for my team, it's the most amazing thing to drive results because you get more marketing and you get to expand your reach and your engagement and all the things that we do. For the first time in our history, that went to zero. Like mm. Absolute zero. So there is no marketing budget, um, but there was. Because when you've got a leadership team like mine and a board like mine that believes in the brand and understands the long game, we're able to talk about the investments that we needed to make and show the impact that we were making. And if you fast forward, um, three night we moved, we were in, we, we started this for America. We're covered in 37 countries, over 150 million views, 1.5 million a day coming through all of our demographics, all of our membership types and segments, um, and grew our Facebook followers, grew our YouTube channel 266% really accelerated our adoption of our app, which now has 11 million members on it, uh, or 11 million downloads and um, a big portion of those members. Um, and this really helped us be present with our fans. Now, at the same time, we were finishing up the biggest loser on the USA network. And we had to decide, how do you advertise? Do you advertise when your clubs are closed? It was a big topic. And what can you produce? Because everything's shut down, right? And I know you've heard a lot from a lot of marketers on what how scrappy we as a group have gotten and how you know proud I am as the industry of thinking outside of the box. But we did the same. We, we went and mined um, some footage that we had and we we said, you know what, um, from, our, from our agency partners at Barclay, like, hey, can you help us create a story? And we said, we're gonna bring the gem to you. And again, being Planet Fitness, we called it out binge button all because that's what we were doing. We were streaming, we were binging, we were stuck. Um, and we brought it forward um, in a time when everybody else was very somber, very sad, very black and white. Lots of piano, I don't know if you remember, lots of piano music in April and May of last year. You know, just crazy. And yeah. wanted to bring in it through. Fact, in fact, I have, in fact, if you want, I, I do have a, the, the little video clips that kind of the comparison and you talked about your brand voice and, and your purpose. I'm happy to share if, you, if you'd like me to take a minute here to just kind of show you the comparison and show the audience the comparison. Um, good, good time to, to, to share this that you sent over here. Let's do it. Give me a half a sec. Let's see. Uh, let's see if this comes through. What, check out my technical skills here. Here's the. Uh, here's what was generally going on. I think this kind of gives everyone the, the, the little um, the little idea of, of what the, the the general tone was. Do you want to set up your clip here for a second, Jeremy? Sure. Yeah. I, I mean, the big challenge for us was like, okay, so what do we do? And we've got um, our app, which was in the foundling phase um, at this point in time. Luckily, we had our innovation agenda, our digital agenda going. But we said, well, let's take this moment to actually bring Planet Fitness to America. So we're going to put the gem in your pocket with our free app and use this as a way to drive awareness and goodwill and show pe people what the power of the judgment-free zone is. 
And the brief that I gave my team is like, I don't want any piano music. I don't want any together, together, together in these difficult times. Like I want us to break free and break through the noise um, like only we can do and just have a little bit of fun with it um, and show all our new initiatives. So this is what they came up with. Since everyone's at home, binge button all. Planet Fitness is bringing the judgment-free zone to you. Join us on Facebook Live for daily home work-ins like puppy playtime, homeschool recess, and race car cardio. Plus, we put our gym in your pocket with an app packed full of workouts for everyone and trainers you totally high-five if you could. Ditch the binge button and work in with us. Download our free app today. Planet Fitness, united we move. I think they certainly accomplished their their uh, goal of not having the, the somber piano music. Um, and it certainly <laughs> breaks through the noise, doesn't it? It did. It, you know, it really did. And it, and it brought that moment of brightness and levity that we, we desperately needed then and we still need now. Um, and, you know, just the branding of United We Move and the sentiment, we are saying we're together. But we're more importantly showing we're together. And again, calling in all our favors from friends and family. Um, and having some amazing men and women and celebrities and social media influencers actually come and join this for us, started this movement for us, no pun intended. Um, but you know, what happens is you've got to think as a marketer of where you go next. You're talking about the year ahead and this was leading into that summertime and it looked like things were calming down. Things started to open up a little bit. And I mean, my team's managing through the data clubs, opening and closing and opening and reclosing. And, communicating to our members and just being very human and trying to talk about all of that. And through this process, our own people started to stand up. We have trainers, free fitness trainers in every Planet Fitness location. And they started to help us with these home work ins, right? And um, became, or already were, but became our brand ambassador and voice. So we start to pivot away from the celebrities and the influencers to again, have a fun because now what was happening, June, July, August, think about that time, was the new barrier to fitness was fear, uncertainty, and doubt. Can I go into a club workout safely, if, even if it's open? What do I do? How do I work out with a mask on? Is it clean? Is it safe? Is it sanitary? The good thing is for us is we've been an extremely clean club. Our protocols, the plans that our franchisees follow have been the best of the best since 1992. And we wanted to talk about it, but going back to your brand and your tone, the fear I had was we can be very clinical and very sterile doing this. There's a lot of science, a lot of data, a lot of white lab coat guys that didn't make you feel inspired to get moving or to trust anybody. In fact, it probably made you a little right. more scared when they showed up. So um, we took a step back and we said, all right, let's use our, um, our brand ambassadors, our trainers, um, one being the lead, a man named Teddy Savage, which is a beacon of light, the most impressive positive person you've ever met um, through my partnership with the franchisees. I said, I want to hire him. I want him to work for me. He's now our leader of fitness excellence for the company and just an incredible beacon for us. And I said, Teddy, help us tell the story. So together again, the marketing team pivoted. We went from work-ins, home work-ins, working in, in your home with you to workouts, but now showing what we branded is clean cigarette. So it was, it's not just about us being clean. It's about you, the community being clean and what we mm -hmm. can do for each other. And, um, and that was a difference. That was actually something very important, thinking about how the brand operates and what and how we go to go to market and well, how do we talk. If it was just us, then we're preaching at you. If it's us collectively, then we're in this together. And again, that United We Move message comes through. And so Clean Center came to life. We had to show members how to work out in the club again, how to work out with a mask on, because let's be honest, it, that sucked. Like, you know, trying to breathe and run and, and do this. And we had a variety of mandates and, 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 and municipalities that were different all over the country. So we had to work through that with our members and our member base. Um, so that took us through the fear, uncertainty and doubt phase. It got us into the fall. People started to come back. We started to get that vibrancy back in our business and the clubs start to reopen at scale. But then there was one more barrier that was kind of leading us into New Year's this year. And it was a fact of the matter is um, atrophy. Right, is that once you get stuck, it's hard to start. That's one of the hardest things in fitness. And by God, the entire world was stuck. And so we really had to take on this idea of getting unstuck. Um, and mm. we're, we're, we're big about finding like enemies. Like we like it, like we're a challenger brand. So, so we want to find that, that's part of our ethos. And uh, we said, well, what is the biggest 
enemy that we have right now. And you know what? It's the couch. <laughs> so we said it is, it is literally the couch. Or maybe our, our bedroom Zoom offices. Like that would be another one. But but we, we decided we we're going to take on the couch and make that the enemy of getting unstuck and showing um, that we're ready to help people move again. Um, and so we started a whole new version of bringing the brand to life through unstuck, which led us through the back half of the year. Um, you have to be open-handed as a brand part of culture. Um, so we partnered with Comedy Central and we let our comedians just run. And we said, we would like you to break up with a couch. And, and, um, and by God, they created some amazing content for us. Some of it was too hot for TV, so we had to keep it on Comedy Central. Um, but you know, again, the brand, the, the tone was right. We had some fun doing it, but we told a very serious message um, in the process. You, uh, you want me to share the uh, the clip? I do have that one here as well. Oh yeah, I'm sure that'd be fun. Let's see. Here we go. I just don't see us working out. You don't support me. When I met you, you were really firm and curvy. And now you're kind of saggy. Yeah. Well, you smell like farts. <laughs> it had to be said. It's time to break up with your couch. Planet Fitness has everything you need to get up and get moving in 2021, at home or in club. I've been sleeping around on you. A lot. You're still talking to the couch, right? Oh my gosh. I love that. And it, must, it must be a tremendous <laughs> amount of fun to have be able to have that kind of voice and, uh, and, and be able to be as uh, irreverent, I guess, is the, is, the, is the nice term for that. Yes, absolutely. I think, it's, I think it's about being human, right? I mean, I think we're talking about brands. Um, we can get ethereal and lofty. And at the end of the day, it's just, you know, and there are different brands that have to do different roles. So some, that works for some. But for us, we want to be real. We want to cut through it. We want to be human. We want to be your partner in fitness and in wellness. And, you know, you think about all of this. So it's like, okay, so, so, so what? Like if I'm a marketer, I'm saying it's like, this is great, beautiful, inspire, inspiring, fun. You guys look like you're having a good time. It was a lot of hard work, um, a lot of deep discussions. But what happened through this was we um, were able to engage the members who didn't have access to a club, help the members who were uncertain about the club and engage a whole new population of people who now had health and fitness top of mind. So if you think about this before the pandemic, 70% of America is considered overweight or obese. And that was the thing that kept me up at night because I was like, what would have happened if America was 10% or the world was 10% healthier? That to me, as we're building a business and driving our revenue, but we're also doing good, is the thing that drives me and my team. And 78% of the cases that are hospitalized for COVID, as reported by the CDC, those that were hospitalized were over, overweight and obese. It is truly a pandemic beyond and before this pandemic. And it's one that's mm -hmm. very, very important. And it's linked to cardiovascular disease. It's linked to, to um, diabetes, type 2 diabetes, which a huge number of di types of diabetes is type 2 diabetes, which is treatable and preventable. So we take this opportunity to say, okay, now the world is coming out of this. We want to get back. We're, we're posed and primed to understand wellness and fitness. And two things happened in the very end of the fall leading us into this year. The first was for the first time ever that I've seen, um, and as far back as the data goes that I can get a hold of, people want to do something very simple. Anytime you talk about fitness, lose weight, Men want to get bigger, women want to get smaller. I'm sorry to, to just cut it through like that, but again, judgment-free zone, this is how it is. Since the dawn of time, that's what, we, that's what it's been when you ask people what they want from fitness. Yeah. For the first yeah. time ever in the fall of last year leading into this year, the number one driver for getting Metro Gym and, and starting my fitness routine was to reduce stress and anxiety. Hmm. And that's the long, dark tale that's coming through COVID. It's, it's not over even after. Um, we've been so isolated. We've been so yanked out of our community as humans um, and yanked out of our routines. And um, when you look at it, even the latest results through our studies that we've done, over 50% of Americans have significant more stress in their lives. The teen suicide hotline rate is off the charts. Like yeah. there's a deep underbelly to this. And physical fitness is a way to actually improve your mental health and your mental well being as well. Again, very dark, very hard to talk about. 
how do you do that? And, and we, we began leaning into that um, over the course of the campaign and where we're going and talk about that a little bit more. But the other thing that was and by the way, it, it fits perfectly with the no judgments as well. It's a tough t topic to talk about, but we're not going to judge you by uh, for what you have to say or how you feel. That's right, because we're all in it together. And I know that's the thing we make fun of not saying from COVID, but it's just feeling as you're a part of you're a part of the community, you're a part of something that is obtainable, that you can address, that you can move forward. And that led us from jumping into 2021 and breaking free from 2020, which was kind of the start that we had and getting our getting that time of year rolling into May, which is Mental Health Awareness Month. But you know, the Boston Globe article that came out, I think it was in April, really also revealed just the impact of this is 42% of Americans have had some form of undesirable weight gain with an average weight gain of 29 pounds and 10% gained 50 pounds or more. So if you think about this pandemic and what it has done to our uh, mental well-being and our physical well-being, um, this is the ability for our purpose really to take on a next level. And the judgment-free zone wasn't created due to the social issues that are going on in the world right now that have gone on through all this. It was ahead of that, but is now even important in this part of the conversation as we talk about our communities in which we serve and operate and how we engage in those communities. So it's a phenomenal business, a phenomenal brand. It requires us to continue, you, you hear markers, I think the word of the year is pivot, for sure pivot, but having a brand and a purpose tied to a business mission and delivery gives you the ability to act with that speed and to be decisive and to be yeah. distinct. And the one thing I think we have to worry about, you know, because we had to operate differently through COVID was how to maintain that distinctness, that uniqueness that makes us who we are. And let the folks who want to opt in, opt in, be a part of this incredible experience we have and just, again, deliver, deliver, deliver. Um, and we're very, very pleased. I mean, here we are, you know, we're in June. Um, um, all of our clubs in America are open. Um, we're very excited about the membership growth and recovery that we've had in Q1 and that what's been reported. Um, you know, we've over 14 million members and, and growing and, and we've got our, the, the same, you know, split of male and female and the utilization is coming back and we're capturing members that, you know, have been unfortunately abandoned, you know, through um, other gym closures who haven't made it through this pandemic. And we want everybody to, to make it because again, the ocean's 255 million people. There's plenty of room to play. We just want to make sure we're, at the end of the day, when we hang up our coats, when we lay down on our pillow at night, have we changed as many lives as possible and have we truly democratized fitness and kept it at 10 bucks a month, whether it's here in New York, whether it's in LA or whether it's in Lubbock, Texas, so that we can provide that access. And it's wonderful too. I mean, as you're talking about the, the mission and, and the, the pandemic, obviously the, the public health crisis is more than just what the pandemic was, uh, obesity, heart disease, diabetes, et cetera, are, are all part of part of the public health and mental health as well. And it, it, it's got to be really satisfying to be able to be a, a, a part of the solution for that before, during, and after. Yeah. Um, as we start now to transition to the after, um, you've made some, uh, you had some big assets going into, into COVID. We, you know, we talked about brand purpose and brand mission. We talked about community, which I think is, um, uh, can often be overlooked and and, un, and undervalued, um, but you clearly had that as um, a, a key part of your uh, assets going in. Um, you made some investments. You talked about the digital tools you you uh, you spun up and um, certainly um, uh, invested in during the pandemic. What 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 are you going to continue to to invest and double down in? What are you going to shed to to again? I have a feeling your business is full of. Uh, full of, uh, uh, of metaphors and puns, but what pounds are you gonna shed um, from, from that? Where, what does the future look like? Where, where, where do you go from here? Yeah, I mean, I think for us, it's, it's, it's maintaining the, the momentum and the flexibility that we've built to, to use some of the puns from our, from our industry. I mean, our digital strategy is now a cornerstone of who we are. Um, and it is really being, making fitness accessible, democratizing, as I've talked about, one more step anywhere, everywhere, and at any time that our members want. Because we leaned in heavily to our digital um, through content, through our app, through what we're doing on our channels. Um, but what we know and what we have seen without a shadow of a doubt 
is that our members are coming back, they're using the clubs and that digital usage and all and everything we had while we're still very strong and 60, 70% of our joins are coming through digital channels right now, there's no substitute for the in-club experience, zero. Mm -hmm. And the difference though is, is that that choice model of being able to provide it all is the future of where, we're, we'll, where we will be from this point forward. It is no longer just a bricks and mortar experience. It is a planet fitness judgment free zone experience and what our CEO calls bricks with clicks. So it doesn't matter where you're at. The gym is in your pocket. We're here for you. The community is around you and supporting you. And yes, you got 2000 club locations you can access anywhere, anytime. So we are really letting our members guide us, staying as close to them as possible. And now because of all these digital channels and the investment that we made, all the data, all the triggers, all the journeys enable us to get very, very smart and deliver unbelievable brand led experiences in a cookie list world, right? These data triggers with our own database are the ones that are guiding us and help, helping us grow this business like nobody's business. Like it is just an incredible journey for us. And we are on track from 2000 clubs to 4000 clubs from all the locations we have right now to truly being Planet Fitness and going all around the world. Um, this is going to be a phenomenal journey. And I'll tell you for me and my team and what makes me so excited is I feel so bullish and I feel like we're just getting started. And it's because now people are, are really paying attention and mm -hmm. our purpose now has gone to a whole nother level. So we had to train ourselves, you know, you know, Eric, I think, I think that's the other thing. And, and that's the other thing we'll double down in, um, some of the investments we're making, the people, the talent we're bringing in some of the, some of the new senior execs that were brought in to join our leadership team is we want to make sure we continue to build our muscle memory um, within digital, um, within um, how do we drive experiences that are connected in the club through our app at home, um, and what are the partnerships to help us get there? You um, that those connections in the community. Last question, then we'll open up to Q and A from the uh, from the audience. Um, the community being that that asset that has run through um, run through our, our conversation today. Um, Help me understand, if you could, how much of that is by um, accident and human nature? How much of it is actively cultivated? Where are some of the examples of where that takes root from a deliberate strategy perspective, whether in the club, on the in the digital realm, that you as a company have invested? You mentioned bringing one of your key trainers up from uh, up from the from the uh, from a single club to have a national stage. Like, where do you make those investments to help foster that community building? I'd love to love to get a little bit of insight into that as well. It's a great question. And the answer is all the way through the system, through the entire organization. Um, you know, we have a franchise based organization as well as corporate owned clubs. We want to make sure that we are planet fitness corporately, but we're activating and serving our communities locally. And so we rely on our franchisees um, and share data and the data platforms to make sure that we're servicing the member at the local club level. Then also the platforms that we have, whether they're owned or whether they're the ones that, you know, that we all we all use and, and, and pay for. We continually listen and drive conversation and respond. And, and one of the big things through COVID was we doubled down on our investment and our social capabilities and social media um, listening and, and response time because we wanted to make sure that we were not a brand that was tone deaf, out of touch or, un, or unresponsive. Um, and when you're talking about you know 14 plus million members and the nuances of Georgia being opened and Houston being closed and Dallas being this and that and the other, it gets very complex. So we leaned in very heavily there, but the thing that I would say that keeps it all together, and it's gonna sound odd, is to actually let it go. And it's to be open-handed with it and, and to be human, um, to trust our team, to trust our community, to trust our people. I mean, one of my favorite things to do, and it's a little bit of the old school one, is our Facebook community group for members. Um, we don't mess with it very much because it literally lovingly takes care of itself. Um, but it is such a fascinating place to watch and learn and build and understand and ensure that we, from a corporate perspective, never get out of touch with what's really happening to a person who's struggling to navigate COVID, get to work on public transportation, and maybe doesn't have the true understanding of what it takes to change their life. I mean, again, we've got to enable these communities 
to tell a story that's even more powerful than I can tell from a marketing perspective. And so the power of changed lives is actually the power of the secret sauce of the judgment free zone in the community and the kindness and the respect that's built into there, which we talk a lot about in America, which we need so much more of is happening organically in our clubs. Not perfect. Look, we're human. We're a human based organization. There's always some level of, you know, dissonance or conflict, but as a whole, I've never seen anything like it. So we're leaning in very carefully, but we're trying not to get too involved because we want to make sure that that organic piece continues. Instead, we provide tender, we provide moments, we provide opportunities that we allow the communities to rally around, whether it's United We Move, whether it's New York um, and Times Square and breaking free from 2020 or breaking up with your couch. Um, and those moments um, are really what start to push things forward. And I say maybe one other thing is it gives you your investment strategy and interest, it gives your investment strategy an interesting perspective. Because one of the things that we noticed, just a side story, was the intimidation factor of the gym. I don't know how to use equipment. I don't even know what a lad is. Because 40% of my members have never been a gym member before in their life. Yeah. And they're intimidated to ask someone, even though we have free fitness trainers and guys like Teddy Savage. And so looking at all that equipment and the miles of cardio and all of the purple and yellow equipment so beautiful and clean, I look like an idiot if I don't know how to do it. I go to social media and go to the Fitspo culture to watch people that are just 20 and in really good shape and oiled up and just have good genes at the moment, throw things around and could probably get really hurt. In COVID, people start using QR codes at scale again. So mm. working with our operations team, we said, you know what, we're gonna stick a QR code on every piece of equipment. And if you have the app, you can download it and it'll show you exactly how to use it. Judgment free, no questions asked, get on your way. That simple insight and idea is birthed out of staying close to the member, staying close to my operations team and all the executives partnering and working together and letting the member guide you. Um, and those are just a few examples of things that we've done, but that's really how we, we are building the future state and the investment is looking to the future, staying as close to the member as possible and being as open-handed as possible as we go. And relying upon the, their better angels, it's an it's an optimistic uh, it's an optimistic story, and really something that's uh, that's inspiring as well. Um, I, there is I'm going to open it up. And, I'm sorry. I was going to say the one thing I would say, and it's hard. There is good out there. There really is. Yeah, absolutely, and and it's inspiring when it when it comes to the four like that. Um, we're going now to some questions from the audience, uh, Jeremy. So let me go ahead and read the first one that we have. Uh, what can heritage brands learn from newer digital first brands when it comes to authentically marketing to Gen Z? Yeah, it's a great question. You know, I think that, I think that for a heritage brand, I would say never lose your, your, your brand pair, your brand purpose and your, you know, you know, what is your reason for being your distinctness in the world from a digital first brand? Um, there's an element of, uh, beta and tinkering that is always um, available. Um, nothing's off limits, nothing's off guard. And we have some tenets of that too. There's some foundational things of Planet Fitness from 1992 that we will not change, you know, as part of our heritage and who we are. So find the things that are important to you in your story, know why they exist, like know why they're there, explain why they're there because often the gen z's don't understand they don't they didn't know why do we why as a gym do we offer pizza on a first monday of every month this pizza monday thing right um and in fitness that seems really stupid um but it goes back to our heritage in 1992 and what we did to help our members when there was an issue at the club and celebrate the fact that we're not living to work out we're working out to live and if you do this right continually you can enjoy life, the experiences and the things that are around you. You can't have pizza. You can't have beer on the weekends. You can go partake in, you know, birthday cakes or donuts with dad, with my daughter. It's all about the long game, right? So that's an example for us, but the digital companies. And if you graph that in to be a modern company, it's knowing what to evolve and, and to be okay with beta being okay with getting it out there. I told the story United, we move where we start it, where we end it, bringing yeah. it now it's, now it's all in our app. Like we're not even uh, doing the lives on, on, on the streaming anymore. And people would tell me like, oh my God, that was a new thing. Why, why would you kill that? I'm following the member and letting the member guide us. Um, and I think that I know my brand and I know where, where, where we wanna go. So find that, balance it, don't be afraid. Um, fear is the biggest thing that holds heritage and legacy brands back. 
the perfect is the enemy of the good, right? Very good. Or the anarchist. That would be the other watch out. Blowing everything up because nothing is good. Like, don't yeah. be that. Don't be that marketer either. <laughs> um, let's move on to the next question. Uh, and, and this is an interesting one. And we had a little chat about this in, in some of my research as well. But how do you see your audience demographic expanding to be more inclusive as the industry grows and evolves? And I think this goes back to community and no judgments uh, for you as well. Yeah, it's, it's really continually telling and showing the story of the judgment-free zone and having people believe it. I mean, I, again, like we're a very cynical society and there's a lot and there'll always be some, with 2000 clubs, there's always gonna be some misfire somewhere because we're human. But it's the consistency of how we approach it um, and the celebration and the stage of showcasing when it works best. Um, and you know, you also showcase when you kind of don't get it right too and be okay with that. Cause I think that the, you talk about you, um, you know, good and perfect. It's like the reality and the authenticity of being real um, is people can sniff a market or a mile away now, right? So you gotta, you gotta really believe in it. You gotta really show it. Um, and we, we challenge ourselves to be, um, if there's anything we're gonna fight for at Planet Fitness, we fight for the member and we fight for the judgment-free zone. We will die on a sword for the judgment-free zone. We will. And um, it's finding those things where you have to say you fight for what you believe in and showing that and then demonstrating it time and time and time again. It'll give your team confidence. It creates that distinctiveness and decisiveness so you can move fast. And then your members actually see you in action because there's too much going on in the world of brand purpose right now where people are getting brand purpose confused with corporate social responsibility.